Yeah, and hi and welcome to Hot Hot with Eva and Johnny. And welcome, Johnny. We are Thank now. you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm very, very happy and excited. And uh, uh, I, I, um, I've had many trepidations about sharing this information since February the 8th, but um, my guys said, you know, I have to go loud. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, and we love loud. Just put it out there, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just going to make a little small introduction about what we are going to do here because you yeah. are an awakened star seed. Yeah. And you're also a writer and you are channeling poetry and heaven's messages. And you are very active posting from Cosma the Cosmic Detective and love is the answer to all questions. But that is not all because we were covering that the last time that we met. And for those who didn't watch that angel, Johnny the angel, you really need to go there and and, uh, and get her totally bio because that is so amazing. But there is something happening from then to now. And we are going to dive into that in a bit. I'm just going to give you a hint that it has to start with her awakening to her Actorian Celestial family and she started to filming Merkaba Lightship and we are going to see some of those in a minute. But you have promised to do a cleansing ritual. A clearing prayer, yes. Yeah, that's the right one. Yes. So, um, um, I'm giving the word to you. Okay. Um, this and this is comes from um, Esu Jesus Sananda and uh, the Creator God to clear. For it's a clearing prayer that you use. Um, that you. Um, well, you'll see when I say it. It's a. It's a. It. It's not really short, but it's not really long. And Eva wanted me to do it, so I'm going to do it. All right. <clears throat> I petition by my mighty God spirit within and for a great, great love of our creator, all the lighted masters and all of creation. By my I am presence, I ask that all negative feelings of emotions, deeds, actions, words, all addictions, all anxiety, anguish, any procrastination and distractions, all physical mental and emotional illnesses, being unfocused, unbalanced, unhappy, being off-centered, all regrets, self-humiliation, all evil and darkness, all ego and alter ego, condemning all crosses of selfishness and self-indulgence, all black goo that I bear within myself and within every being and creation on and within Mother Earth that is also within every being of creation in the entire cosmos be cleared away immediately and transmuted by the violet flame of St. Germain from this lower octave to the higher octaves to be uncreated. I ask for complete protection for every creation in the entire cosmos. From all evil and evil technologies, I ask for all the lighted masters and our creator to write the chalices within all souls and fill them with love, knowledge, wisdom, healing, totality, and centralization. I petition for all our harmonic frequencies to be continuously raised. I ask for divine humility and purity of thought. I ask to keep us all centered, focused, and calm within this lower octave of illusion at this ending time, and to keep our emotions and energy in the higher octaves of the cosmic consciousness, which will help us master our free will. Remember, there's only goodness and reality, and evil is of the illusion, like this low 3D octave in which we live on this planet. Please surround and infuse us all with the white light of God and the blue light of St. Michael. I ask this to be done in Esu Sananda's name. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. Well, it's from the Four Winds 10 website, um, which I discovered after... I had my experience with Jesus, and um, 
he told me his name was Esu, and I said, who? And he said, Sananda, Jesus. Well, I've heard of him called Sananda before, and I'd heard of Jesus, of course, um, but I'd never heard Esu. So I typed in my computer, Esu, Jesus, Sananda, and up came Four Winds 10 website. And it's like, it's very, very a divine website, and it has everything you could want to know in there. And um, it, it's it's something that I that I feel is very special. So yeah, well, it felt very special. It felt like it went straight to the heart. So thank you. But it's supposed to resonate of... out. It's supposed to resonate out into all the cosmos, and yeah. so. And that's the beauty when you add your own frequency to it. When you read it, it's your the vibration of your of your voice it's settled in here so it's thank divine blessed from everywhere thank you thank you so now that we have done this clearing and uh, we are here and uh, both maureen and like alexandra are here so hi 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 Good glad you can come you too yeah i miss you so we are going to go back because when we were talking last time, we were talking about your incredible journey through life and how you have ended up uh, writing and giving information from the angels and a bit of numerology. Oh, what do you say? Oh, what? No, never mind. Numerology. Yeah. Numerology. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so now. I do know that you have been so active, especially with Alexandra, working your way through to, you know, explore who you are and open up and you have reached connection with some Actorian friends. Well, actually, that was due to you too, Eva. So you yeah. are the one um, where um, Artan stepped forward that first time in, in our meditation, you were quite surprised and so was I. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And, uh, so, you know, um, there's been a lot of cognitive dis dissonance. I think everybody has that. And I, I always try to stay open. And so it's been quite a journey and it's a fast journey. I mean, I've had, I've been awakened since the late eighties, early nineties and, and I've always, I've had time to adapt to so many things, but this pace is fast, you guys. It's really fast. So, yeah. So, I've had to use all, everything to keep up. <laughs> yeah. And we will go through to there too. But when you were in that meditation and you got contact with your Arcan. Is his name Arkan? Artan. A R T A A N. Arkan. Yeah. So what went through your mind? Because I know that this is something that we feel connected to and, and we do believe that we have our celestial families out there. So when you actually tapped in and got connected and you had a name, so what what happened? What happened with well, you? Well well Okay, this started when I was uh, around seven or eight years old, sitting in the back seat of my parents' car at night, looking up at the stars. My little brother and sister asleep beside the side me, and I'm looking up at the stars and I'm sobbing quietly so nobody will hear me. I'm looking up at the stars and saying, I don't want to be here. Why did you leave me here? I want to go home. I want to go home. Well, my whole life has been on this journey, Eva. And so when Artan stepped forward, I just have to say that the Arcturians are just one of our many star families. But the Arcturians are on the like ninth dimension and higher. They're, they're very spiritually high beings that um, are here to help us with our, our, our ascension. And they want us to know how much they love us, how they can help us. Um, so 
once I accepted that they were part of my family and all of our all of us are I mean we are all have DNA of star our star family in in us if um, it's I leave it up to the audience to do their own research because there's no way that anyone can ever tell you or convince you of anything until you discover it for yourself. Um, just like when I saw my first UFO across the street from my house that night, and I, I wrote a poem about it. I show pictures and I tell people, but until you see it for yourself or experience it for yourself, it's only natural that you have a reticence in believing and it's not just because we're been plugged into this matrix for so long and conditioned it's very very hard to break out of that and that's one way that alexandra's healing with her quantum healing technology sessions and has has totally removed my blockages and along with my Arcturian family and helped um, me to understand who I am. And so I can continue this journey because at my age, I'm like 76. And, and so I have to hurry up and do my job before it's like, <laughs> I, I gotta be, I'm being of service. And um, my, my whole purpose with this, this presentation today is, is to help, raise consciousness and self-awareness and help you to see that there's something more than what we've been told and to go into your heart and find your spirit within. Mm. And you do contribute because you are writing the most beautiful poems from, from uh, heaven and from the angels. So everyone who's been on Facebook and seen your posts know that there are divine guidance that are in, or wherever you are, there's divine guidance. So definitely. Yeah. Um, but this, this contact here led up to something else because I would like to call you the galactic ambassador because I see you as a galactic ambassador. Not only do you have a contact here right now, you, you also have these beautiful footages of Merkaba light ships. ships. Yeah, um, I had, when I saw you start posting it, I took my camera, went outside, you know, tried to, to, you know, pin the camera onto a star and see what's happening. And, and my phone didn't even catch the star. So <laughs> what, what happened? How, well, how, did, what, what, okay. how did you get there? I mean, did you just it, went out one night or what happened? Yeah, no. Well, where I moved to here in Chalice, I have a really nice view of the eastern sky and the southern sky. And so I just, uh, I'm always photographing things. And when I got my, my new iPhone, on, um, actually it was my first iPhone on three months ago, I, I know from my grandson telling me that they have this excellent camera and that's why I wanted it because of the camera. And I've always liked to take pictures. Well, one night I just was looking out at the stars and there's not always a lot of clear nights. There's a lot of, lot of clouds lately mm -hmm. uh, manufactured and otherwise. And so I just saw one that was really bright and I, zoomed in on it and then it started pulsing and and it wasn't even totally dark and i i will show you a couple of them um the first one and then a few of the others um but first of all i i kind of wanted to explain to people what a merkaba is yeah, and please do. You, can, you can find you can find this and i didn't know you guys i i, I didn't even know until i started researching so I, I do ask everyone if you're interested in connecting with the divine to do your research, but I'm going to do a little, little bit right here to tell you what I found. Just on Google it, uh, Merkaba meaning, definition. So the Merkaba meaning or definition is it's a divine light vehicle. 
and mer is equals light, ka is spirit, and ba is body. So merkaba, divine light vehicle. And it was um, used by the ascended masters to connect with the higher realms. And um, the spirit body is surrounded by counter rotating fields of light, wheels within wheels, which they mention in the Bible, spirals of energy as in DNA, which transports spirit body from one dimension to another. So in the Bible, it confirms it. If you look up the, what the Bible says about Merkaba, and you can find that in the book of Ezekiel about Ezekiel's Merkaba, it's a structure of divine light and energy in the human body and every other life form and object in this universe and all others rotating and expanding in all directions simultaneously it perfectly balances and restores while guiding you into the life of your dreams now you guys i got this right off the internet so if anybody thinks i'm making this up go there and look for it yourself yeah uh, so um, maybe we can we can uh, take a copy of it and, and put it in a comment field so people can uh, i did screenshot it and i i can send that out uh yeah. pictures of where i screenshot it but um and Merkel there are a lot of people who want to have something to to refer to so uh, right. i totally enjoy that you are actually picking those reference here so people can can read more about it too so. well you know um merkaba is you can spell it with just ending in an a or an h mm -hmm. so it can be b-a-h or b-a um so the reason i'm i'm going into the explanation of this is because by heart i'm a scientist and i am very close with einstein i call him uncle albert and everything is energy and frequency. And that's what I've discovered are the Merkabahs, um, their, their energy and frequency. And I, that's why I, since February the 8th, I've, every night that is clear, I photograph and take still shots of the Merkabahs. I believe anybody can do it. All you have to do is want want to and ask for guidance i they're there every single night and and I, just because i can't see them every night doesn't mean they're not there and i know they've been there a long time before i discovered it yeah was it by accident no i probably believe i was guided by my arcturian family to to zoom in on that it, I found out confirmation as I'm doing this, I get confirmations. And one of them was an article I read that um, the star, they're out there, they disguise themselves like stars, but they'll be a little brighter. The one that I focused on first from my naked eye looks like it's a little a, a, a oblong. And then when I zoom in, it becomes round and then it, then it starts pulsing and that's because it's spinning and that i know you've heard people probably say that the light ships from our star families they're alive well that's what the merkaba is it is alive it's the energy the definition i just read to you and that comes from the bible it permeates the whole universe and so this gets really heavy into quantum physics, you guys, and I'm not a quantum quantum physicist, but I do. Uh, Einstein knew what he was talking about, dear old Uncle Albert. Now, yeah. yeah, and I want to back the tape t until you said uh, that they are the ships are alive, and there has yeah. been a lot of talk recently because I'm, I'm following a, a couple of pages that are talking about UFOs and, and our galactic friends there. And they are all, you know, putting it out there again over and over that they are real, but they are not in the physical form that we are used to, to, to know them by. So they are more like etheric beings. 
and that makes so much sense when you are reading about the Merkaba and the light bodies that they are because we can connect with each other through our Merkabas and we can move to different places and stages and we can move into the, gal the galactic and cosmos and so if we are energetically connected out there we can't be in our physical form because we wouldn't you know survive out there in the right. cosmos yeah so that is um that is so amazing and i know that we started for a couple you know half half a year ago you know mm -hmm. looking at footages from other people taking those pictures and we said wow we need to get in touch with those and <laughs> Now we are here, and no, we don't need to get in touch with those. We have Johnny. So, would you please show us something that you have been yes. taking pictures? Okay. Of? Well, I, I want to say, you know, when I moved here to Charles three months ago, and to my my sister and her husband, who both have passed, mm -hmm. and I I'm kind of like house sitting um, till they the children decide what they want to do with it, and. Um, and uh, one of one of my sister's husband's friends, Bernie. He we're the same age, actually. I'm a few months older than him. His name's Bernie, and so I had been filming the since February the eighth every night I could the Merkabas, and I didn't tell anyone about it. Just you guys, our group, are the only ones I shared with, and um, so we were going over to my niece's house who lives a few miles away and it was uh we we're going to watch the the super bowl game and bernie just mentions out of the blue well the other night i saw this bright bright gold light that wasn't the moon because it was the full moon and it was on the other side of the sky and i don't know what it was and i'm looking at him and i go bernie why didn't you say something? You should, did, why didn't you film it or sh tell me the next time you see it? Anyways, I was like flabbergasted because I don't know when the Super Bowl was, but it it, it was like um, I'd been filming and I never said a word to him and he just comes out of the blue. Now, listen to me. I don't talk to Bernie about anything that I do on a spiritual level because he's very, very old fashioned and I wouldn't want to upset him. So I was totally totally shocked when he said that so i was looking he just said it was hovering right over the the eastern mountains so i was on the lookout for it and i'll just go right to that one because that was the lowest one and i call it my best one mm -hmm. and um it's because the others sometimes they appear white they the merkabahs sometimes they appear blue this one was gold and it was, you know, the, the full moon was on the other side of, of the sky and totally not the moon, you guys. And um, so when I sent this to you and uh, Cody, our dear friend, Cody was laughing because he said that I was making noises um, like it is when a man and a woman are together making whoopee and I said oh my gosh you made me laugh so much Cody because because at my age that's about the closest I'm gonna get <laughs> <laughs> but if you hear some moans in here you guys because I was like truly moaning but um I'm gonna bring it up um this was don't forget to turn the screen because I won't I yeah won't. I can just say that we, we tried to share our screens before and it didn't go so well. So we are doing it the old fashioned way. We are turning our mobiles. Yeah, well, we can see that. Yeah. Okay, now you have to wait for it. This is over the Eastern sky. Let's see if I can do that. Are you guys seeing it? No, I think we are too close. How's that? Well, I 
it did if, if you if you're holding the camera a bit a, a bit away I think the the um, light will be better yeah because we can see it in the middle of the screen this there she is shining bright yes pulsating oh wow and there's also a reflection of the Merkaba uh, in my screen it's a bit to the left yeah um i don't know what that light was to the side of it um hmm. but it did show up on my my uh video so this one was really sparkling and bright and low in the sky and a lot lower than the ones that i film a lot yeah and it's it, it was almost like it was in gold from from the beginning it, and and she turns it, it is it was in gold and uh most of them are white but lately i've been filming a lot of blue ones this is the only gold one it's it really almost like it's exploding you know it it gets so huge it's like yeah. upsize itself like five or six times and there's also also a bit of green and red of course in it uh-huh i've noticed the colors too yeah. And I try this to watch. The, yeah, go ahead. This is the the longest one. Uh, most they're hard to download on Facebook uh, if they're very long. So I try to keep them under two minutes. This one was almost four minutes. Mm -hmm. It was, um, but I couldn't stop filming it. It was so amazing. Um, yeah. And Maureen says here, it's so amazing how it swirls and, and expands. And I totally agree because it's like it's breathing. Yeah, um, Cody said something like he feels like it's they're trying to send some type of message by the, the pulsing. Mm. I don't know. Um, all I know is that, um, you know, this one was confirmed by my roommate bernie before i saw this he told me about it so i i called this my best one because it was so incredible to see it that low in the sky i've not seen it that low in the sky before and i think this did it to prove to me that that it was really happening <laughs> yeah. because you know we do like to to observe things and we like to to get to know where it comes from so when we are looking at this pulsating item and there is a small uh how to say a glimpse of something in in the left there so you can you can uh, the first thing that i thought of was like is that a reflection from the footage but when you are filming it, it actually moves. So it's not constant on the left side. It's actually moving a bit down under it and it moves up into the, to the pulsating. Oh, you lost your, your voice there. I think you have unmuted yourself there. So you need to unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's better. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Um, technology. Okay. <laughs> so now I just exited out of where I wanted to be. So go ahead, Eva, if you have anything to say while I get back into this. No, I think I said it said enough there. It's uh, quite fascinating how it's it's moving and, and uh, it feels like it's breathing when it's pulsating so i i totally love it and it, as i said the dot that was placed on the left side it's moving and following the macabre so it doesn't seem like it's a reflection a lens reflection or anything it seems like they are connected so that is mm -hmm. good let's see here maureen has a question here uh okay uh one question another asked me about this was, do you zoom in and out while you are filming? Okay, that's a good question. I was going to cover that. So 
when I see the star, I just see it and uh, I, I take photographs first, usually. Um, so when I, when I take the photograph, I zoom in on it. So um, here's an example on the, I don't know which side in the column, there's the still photographs and then there's the video. Can you see that? Yeah. So once I, once I take the photograph, I go to the video and I zoom in on it and I can't touch the controls. So I'm not making it pulse. It pulses by itself. So I am not doing that. The, the Merkaba is doing that. That's I can't, cool. when I'm pressing the video button, if I take my finger off of it, it stops the video and there's no way I could zoom in and out while I'm oh. doing the video because it would stop the video. Yeah. So, so this, cool. so once I get it enlarged from my iPhone, I just start recording and it does the, and it, it, it's the one that's pulsating, not me. I'm not making it do that. Hmm. Well, she says here, thank you. That was what she thought it was. So, yeah. And let's see here. Alexandra says it should be on national. Oh, <laughs> she's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Uh, it's just so amazing. But do, do you have another one too? Oh, I have all kinds. Mm -hmm. Here, let's go. Okay. Um, well, you know, you had some that you were going to share from yours. Um, Can't find them. Okay. So let me see. Here's, here's 12 photos from, from, uh, and videos from um, March the 21st. So I'll do this one. Mm -hmm. These are just, do you want me to make it larger? Or can yeah, see please. It? Can you do that? Yeah, hold on. Okay. That one is blue. Yeah, these yeah, are blue. I remember that one. Okay. Um, those are just short ones. Um, let me get to a longer video. The 20. Uh, first photo. That's the one I sent to you. That's six photos. Let's see. This is the I can't recall I have seen that before. This is February the 9th, the the second night I filmed. Uh it wasn't quite dark. No. Out, but it was it was dark to the naked eye, but not as dark as the other ones. And it's really moving back and forward. Yeah, I'm not. I hold it. Held. I hold it really still. Well, so, that was quite interesting because it looks like you are filming in a day broad light. It does, but it's 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 twilight. That's not, you know, because it's getting lighter out um, later. So this was early in the evening. I don't know. I did since February the 8th, I've tried to be more scientific about it and put the dates and times and what direction I'm facing and all oh, so that. You can compare them. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to approach it. Um, I took science and art in college, so I'm a scientist at heart and, um, here. Well, you are the cosmic detective, so of course you are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know that's quite interesting. Um, when I realized that, but now you that you have been following those macabres since February, in the beginning of February, February, uh, uh do you see that they are changing? Uh, can you see that there are the same structure, or 
are there different macabres throughout the different footages or is it someone who like how should you say coming back to you showing itself you know like it's there it's always there and and that's how they they don't want the bad guys to you know they they're appearing to us as stars to the common people i don't know about scientists i mean you're not going to get any um you're not going to get any uh real information off the the regular media you guys so mm -hmm. uh, you have to investigate this for yourself but this one i call the traveler because it was moving um and I, i'm i'm still learning every night you guys but um this one was really moving and it was it was a very different type of one they always appear round can you see that no there's a there's a flicker of light a pretty that's large the, that's, that's what it's doing oh okay now it's red and blue it goes between red and blue yeah that's it that's wow it. i call it the traveler because i've never seen it do that much but that's that's what it's doing um that one, that, that one was very different from the other ones. Yeah, it was. And I've only seen that. Seen, well, I've seen a traveler, but not. Um, I've not seen one that did big like that. I saw one really briefly and I tried to film it. Um, so eventually I'm going to have all these cataloged in, and uh, so that I can and learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. computer but um uh, so I mean now that you are seeing those macabas and you are taking footages of them and you are you know really connected mentally and with your heart with them have you experienced that your dreams have changed since you started to to take footage no, of those? Not, not really. Uh, I do know I'm learning about Arcturian, my Arcturian. They like to be called Celestials. There's a book um, that explains that. Um, but th they are Celestials. They're, they communicate telepathically and it's like uh, knowing it's like um, there are people that that can communicate directly with the star beings and they have telepathic implants like Elena Danon but like Michael Jaco he said it took him a long time to develop his um, abilities and, it, and the same with me it's like taking me a long time so I have to really tune in and be at a certain vibration before I get get the message and you have to want to mm -hmm. you have you, you have to have the desire but um i get all these confirmations about as it happens on this journey since it started and i was led to a video on amazon prime and it's called um contact with beings of light and there's a book also on Amazon called Contacts with Being of Light. And this lady, Dorothy Isaac, she lives in Canada. She's older lady than me in her 80s. And uh, she was um, took eight millimeter films over a period of many years and was contacted by a group of people. And this film is how these people came to her house. And they investigated her thoroughly and they, they, she had no want of media attention. She never made money off of anything. She just was doing it as a service. Um, and the beings of light talked to her and told her that, well, they don't talk to me. Maybe I'm not tuning in well, uh, well enough. All I am is just recording the Merkabahs mm -hmm. to show I'm helping raise consciousness of of people that to let you know that we're not alone. These are our star family. They're here for 
They love us. They want to help us. They're not scary beings like the, you see in the movies. There are scary beings that are out there, but they've been removed and they're not here. Mm. Oh, scary beings are the people that are left here. <laughs> but but I, I, do that they, I do believe that they are communicating with you because they are pulsating and the vibration is giving off some sort of energy. So they are communicating with you somehow. Let's see, Maureen added a question here. Um, it is so interesting to, uh, it's so interesting how colors change and each feels differently to me energetically. And I think she was referring to the last one, you know, that flickered and uh, went from blue to red. And oh, yeah. when she did that, it almost, you know, overlapped itself like two circles in one way. So it almost was this infinite symbols on. And the colors of reminded me, you know, of the feminine and the masculine divine as we usually see them on posts on Facebook. So, that yeah. Makes, Sorry? That makes, that makes sense. Hmm. So, how did you see it, Maureen? Because you said you felt differently to, it felt different, differently to you energetically. So, how did you... How did you connect with that image Jonah was sharing? You can put it in a common field if you want to. Or if anyone else has some questions, please add it here. Because now it's the time to ask Johnny all about this. She is a cosmic detective and she has more answers to, to this one. Do you have another one? I know that you have been sending uh, a lot of those footages. Yeah, oh, I love that blue color. This was from March the 20th and yeah. it's blue. It's blue. Um, um, so that was from 11, 18 PM. It's almost like you're saying hi and explode in a purple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other night, I saw a traveler and I couldn't capture it in the eastern sky and I went over to the southern sky where I usually film like where this Merkaba was and uh, I did get a flyby underneath on one of my videos. I, I don't know where it is but it it was like a I asked them if they would come back and they did so so I guess I am communicating I just don't realize it consciously yet. Uh. They so supposedly they hear us, they hear, they see us, they hear us, we're protected. Um, and I'm just, I'm just taking it as it comes and learning just like you guys are, so. Yeah. And I guess the, the energetic field is talking to us in, in many different ways too, of course. But that is so amazing. That color is so intense. I know. I can, see, I can see that it's moving all around it too. Is that uh -huh. is that from uh, the sky too, or the, this? I don't. I think the sky. Yeah, everything's energy and frequency. So I'm sure that that's that's just what comes up on the camera. So. Um, I, I, I wish I had, oh, there's the flyby, you guys. Yeah. Oh, wow. There's, oh, there's, my. That's the one I asked to come back. Oh, that is so freaking <laughs> amazing. That was the one. That's oh, the look one how had. that big one is pulsating when afterwards. It's like, <laughs> it's an energetic print. Why did I, didn't I see that one? Oh my God, that was the best one so far. I know, I know, I love, I loved it when I, cause I, I, I didn't, I get so excited, you guys. I forget to tell you things, and then I have trouble downloading it, and mm. and um, so then I'm trying to, I've figured out now how to download them better. But the flyby, along with the gold one that was low in the sky, are my two favorite ones. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm glad that 
And let's see here, Alexander <laughs> put something in here too. So let's see. Uh, if children see it, it might help them to see them. Yeah, definitely. If what is it? What she said? Uh, if the children see it, it might help them to see them. And Maureen just added too, as a view, there is a recogni recognition of the vibration that holds understanding in my field. The Merkaba, oh, let's see here. The Merkaba holds a pulse that radiates frequency. What the purpose is remains to be learned by the one receiving. Seems to be an activation of the heart for myself, a collective field. Yeah. I think that was the message to a lot of us because the colors of it is the uh, the yin and yang of the masculine and feminine divine. So I think that is a collective message in there actually, not just for for one of us or, or individual. I think that was a collective message. But um that's part of that's why to share because this is for everyone and oh. everyone it is for everyone and that's why I was prompted to to go loud and share and to get over you know at my age like if you know my favorite saying is if not me uh who and if not now when so you know I'm getting old so this has started happening for a reason and I have to share it and I'm very blessed to have my spiritual family to be able to share it with wow. and uh I'm so thankful for you coming on here and share it with us. And that last one, that was so amazing. <laughs> I really need to see that one one more time here. And let's see here. Alexander, my question about zooming in was actually from my son. Uh, when I showed him these, he was questioning. Oh, uh, yeah. And I don't blame him for questioning. Um, all I can say is tell your son to try it himself. Um, with my iPhone, I'm just learning how to do the phone. And so all I know is that when I press the record button, I've already enlarged it. And then the pulsing, I I can't take my finger off because it'll stop the video. Mm -hmm. There may be other ways to video and do that, but I don't know how to do that. Um, well, this is working perfectly fine. So stick with that one. But <laughs> do, do you have another flyby? Um, no, no more flybys. That's the first and only one. Um, wow. Here's one from 226. It was, you see it? Oh, yeah, I can see it in the big, oh, it went away and it, came, it comes back. It's almost like when it's expanding, it's sucking in the the uh, environment around it. But in the beginning, when you started to to show the this video, there was almost like a ray that flew out of it. Did you see that? Um, no, but. Let's see here. So I just wanted to, if everybody's searching for them, um, early in the evening, it's in the eastern sky, and then it moves like a star with the rotation of the earth over to the southern sky, which is my window. So if you guys are, and that's usually around 10, 30, or 11, or 12 at night. Yeah. So if you guys look in the eastern sky early in the evening, and then go to the southern sky, southeastern sky, and later in the evening. Um, and the close, the closest, brightest, you will see it's different than the other stars. It, it will definitely be sparkling more and bigger. And then you zoom in on it and you will see the round and the pulsing. If you have an iPhone, this wouldn't be capable of me. I, I don't know. I don't have a Kodak or anything. I used to have a Kodak, but I don't have, this is the only way I've been able to do it is with this iPhone camera, which is a really good camera on iPhone, iPhone 13. Okay. 
So I really need to take my iPhone outside again <laughs> to see what's happening. But it it doesn't zoom in, so I I don't get the stars. But I do have uh, a. If, um, if well, if you if you click on the picture and spread it with your fingers, it will zoom in. Okay, maybe <laughs> maybe I can try that one. <laughs> Because that yeah, is like, so, so like, spread it like that. Um, yeah. Let's see here. They're, they are chatting with each other here. But Maureen says, yes, I bet he will pay more attention to what he sees in the sky at night now. <laughs> Good. That was the purpose of this show. Yeah, uh, expanding consciousness. Yeah. She also asked here, I have been something similar, however, my camera does not show the details the way yours does on Android. But do you have well, an Android or do you have an iPhone? I have an iPhone 13 and it's the newest and oh. that's why I wanted it is because it has three camera lenses um, that if you see pictures of an iPhone 13, there's three camera lenses in it. It's really a good camera. So I'm very blessed. I've never been able to have one before. I only had Android before. So if you have a good camera, I imagine if you know how to do that, I don't, this is the best I can do. So yeah, I really need to ask you one more question because you said it, it, when you went out, you, you were looking at a certain direction. But have you ever tried to look at the other direction, the opposite direction? Well, when I first started just looking at, at the skies and Bernie had told me about uh, the thing he saw in the sky before I filmed it. We were coming home. It was late at night. It was really, really cold out. And in the north the northwestern sky there was something that if i'd known now what i know i would have put on my coat and went out and it was too cold out I and mean, it was freezing it was below zero and mm -hmm. so what i've been filming is through my window in the bedroom and i'm warm and cozy <laughs> but it's oh. warming up now, so I, I maybe i'll be able to go outside and get some other directions um, do you actually are f uh, taking pictures of them of them when you are inside yeah oh i thought you were standing outside <laughs> no no i'm just like sitting on my standing by the window or sitting on my bed like here's my windows um. And they're pretty big windows. Um, I had this one closed for the reflection, but those are the windows I just look out of and film from. Um, when it warms up, I'm going to go outside, you guys, but I'm just learning too. <laughs> yeah. Because I have watched from the, uh, let's see, so I say it right here ECT Ranch with James Gilmore. I think it's. Oh, like yeah, yeah. He said he, yeah. yeah. Have he, you? He, yeah, you do know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. He is. So I can, when you are outside, because that is what I'm looking for when I go outside. You know, to see all this massive energy moving back and forth, and uh, sometimes you you think you are seeing something there, and it turns out to be a plane, and it's so annoying <laughs> oh i know well i don't look for anything moving um the flybys were just they wanted me to see that i guess i just look for the brightest star what i've heard is that they appear to others like stars mm. so um, and that i can see sometimes when i go out there can be someone that is so shining so intensely um, but I can't see with my with my eyes that it's pulsating or that it's changing colors. So I guess that it's easier when you have a phone because there's obviously some kind of reflection to the phone uh, and the camera lens, I guess. So it's easier to see it. Uh -huh. That's um, what I think. Maybe it's not. I don't. I don't know. All I know is. Since February the eighth, I try to to uh, mm. to go out and uh, film. 
I know we're in the sky where the one I film all the time is. I've never seen one that's low, like my favorite one. Mm. Now, I have to mention that other people are photographing these. Um, and last night on YouTube on Gina Marie Colvin Hill, she uh, photographed something and she said, is this supposed to be um, Jupiter? So hold on. Um, so take a while to load here. This is on YouTube. Um, Have you sent your picture of the golden macabre and the flyby to her? No, no. I I first learned about Merkabahs from Victoria Lillenquist, and if anybody wants to go to her site, she photographs different Merkabahs. Um, so I don't know why this is taking so long to load. Okay. So this one is just from last night. So I seem to get all these confirmations. Um, this is what she said. Is this supposed to be Jupiter? Um, and this looks like a Merkaba to me. This is on, on YouTube. Well, was it moving part through the I don't, screen or, or? I, don't, I don't know if she moved it or, or I don't know. All I know is the shape and the gold color. Wow. She, yeah. Maureen says that she recalls seeing a video poster for someone in Colorado sky over sky over mountains and looked very similar to what you were showing right now. So. Victoria films Merkabahs that are different kinds. She's done a mothership and photographs, still photographs beautiful lights. Mm -hmm. This is the where she, I got the confirmation. Um, it's called Ezekiel's Wheel. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. That and is circle can, within the circles. Yeah, and you can find this on her website. Uh, mm -hmm. Victoria a little inquest she shares and she's not she shares with everybody she does um presentations and everything only people i've shared with before now is you you although i sent one out the other night uh by accident to the public <laughs> well that I, that I said is this a star because i meant to send it to the group but that was an accident i haven't nobody else has seen any of the any of these others at all so oh, well they are seeing it now <laughs> and we are going to make sure that this video gets out there so i hope but, more but I, are watching. I, I i'm going loud i'm going large i i don't want fame i don't want money i just i'm trying to help um with everyone to expand their consciousness um Dor dolores cannon explains ufos and what they are if you guys want to look up her and you know who dolores cannon is but i'm talking to the audience um mm. there's also i i keep getting these confirmations every time i have doubt so this is pictures of from the book i told you about beings of light the ones that she photographs and the ones, if you look up her video on Amazon Prime, Dorothy Izot, Izot, Contact with Beings of Light, The Amazing True Story of Dorothy Wilkinson Izot. Mm -hmm. And this right here, a Merkaba and Merkaba. Yeah. That's in her book. But the film is a is a really wonderful film too you guys it's a short film but it's a documentary it's good well there's a lot of information from different people there and there are different ways to see those too i haven't seen the things that you have seen outside uh, but i do have seen uh, small shapes round circles of light inside no. Well, okay, now then that we're talking about that would be orbs. And 
in Dorothy Izot's video, her, her sister was standing at the kitchen sink and it was dark out and the camera was interviewing her sister, Dorothy's sister, and behind her in the window, there was a Merkaba that was going right by and showing itself. And so then at the same time later, they were looking at the film and there were two orbs right around her throat. Yeah. And that was one thing I was gonna cover in this, in this video. But uh, usually orbs are like transparent. You can see a color, but you can also see at least that that is how I perceive it. They are a bit transparent. This was solid color. Wow. And it was this beautiful neon dark blue light. I and it was a couple couple of them. And there wasn't they weren't flying by, they just appeared in front of me and then they disappeared so I, that could be archangel michael or it could be um spiritual beings um that that's a pretty a special this right here i'm going to show you this is my very first photo of orbs that i took do you see it yeah so i was on a river trip on the Salmon River and I took a picture of a deer by our camp. When I got home, that's what I saw and there was no deer. It was these two orbs. And that was my first um, photographs of orbs. I've photographed many, many orbs over the years that have, um, if you look in the background of my uh, Facebook page, you'll see the sky and there, it's not the sun, there's these gigantic orbs behind. What happened on that, I was on another day river trip in a bus going to the, and I stuck my camera out the window at the time. I didn't have an iPhone, I just had a, stuck my camera out the window and that's the shot I got of those big orbs. Mm. And you can see that on the background of my Facebook page. Nobody ever comments on it, but yeah. that, was, that was just, um, I've photographed orbs for for years now, um, at least fifteen years. And, and and those orbs that comes from from um, you no know, etherical beings or past past. I believe. I believe. And you can they're... actually you can take footage of them with your own camera if you are mm -hmm. going to you know old settings and you just take pictures. You don't have to see them with your own eyes, but just take picture and you can. Yeah see how the orbs are actually shifting throughout the pictures then when you get back home. So that is so incredible it, to see. It is. I, yeah. I've learned that orbs really like, you feel, you can photograph them out in nature really a lot better than usually than in the home. And um, you're exactly right. You don't see them with your naked eye usually. Some people do, but not everyone. And I believe those orbs are similar to the Merkabahs. And when I read the explanation of Merkabahs, I believe that they're, they're just a smaller version of the ones in the sky. That's what I believe. And so it's, it, you know, everybody has to do their own, own thing, but um, they're definitely a spirit. That one that you saw, the blue, that was amazing. Yeah. Um, that was very special. It was. They are still in my mind. It was a long time ago <laughs> that I saw that color, but I, I definitely will not remember it. Uh, I will remember it. I will never forget it. Uh, Marie says this too. It uh, sounds special. And yeah, it was special. There was a lot of things going on there and uh, connected to, this, to the spiritual world. And... Um, yeah, there was a lot of talk about Archangels at that time. So, yeah, maybe it was the first well, one. Well, Archangel yeah. Michael, he, he, he yeah. is connected with the blue ray, so. Yeah, he is. And so are many others, too, so. Yeah, right, right. So it could be actually a lot of things there. But I'm, I'm glad that they shown themselves. But for those who want to, to see how to if they can capture orbs or Merkavas, go outside with your camera and don't be afraid to to take pictures 
of what you are seeing and if they doesn't appear right away then keep doing it because sooner or later it will be caught on camera like your flyby I, I love that a flyby yeah totally wonderful mm. it's, not, it's not I've learned it's not you have to see it to believe it I've learned it's you have to see it believe it to see it yeah I, I've had so many different experiences in my life and so I'm very open so I've already believed it so mm. <laughs> I'm not yeah, that's true. Believe, many... believe and you it should come to you it's like the old saying that asking you shall receive yes so yeah I don't have any other questions here and I think we covered most of it so is there something you want to close this gathering with do you have something um no i think we covered everything i just i just uh, hope everyone um finds their their the life of their dreams just like what the merkabahs are leading to you to i i'm i'm connecting with the life of my dreams and and i hope you all connect with the life of your dreams yeah that was sweet Maureen says thank you and um, so do i Thank you so much, Johnny, for coming on and actually have the guts to show this. And uh, we will make this, you know, spread spread this video in uh, multiple places now, so people actually can watch for themselves and uh, to go. I've got I've got my Merkaba on. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and. Uh, Let's see, let's see. Alexander says, unique, beautiful, spectacular life. Thank you so you both stars is many blessings. Love, love, love. Well, bless you for being here. And thank you for everyone who's tuning in. And most of all, thank you, Johnny, Cosmona Detective. And um, yeah, gosh, it, love you it, all. I love you too. Thank you so much. It takes a village. It takes a village and we are the village. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye and be safe. Bye bye. 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 Accidentally. See you later. Yeah. So.